I am going to kill you. Last time on, uh, oh, what the hell is the show called? Murder She Rolled. I was just, you know, minding my own business, being frozen completely to death. When I got resurrected, met three complete strangers, most of whom seem like assholes. And apparently, I have to go solve my own murder and their murders. <sighs> anyway, welcome to Murder She Rolled. Hey everybody, welcome to Murder, She Rolled. Uh, it's a podcast where there's four dead people, and they're dead, and but they're trying to not be. He was really enthusiastic about doing the intro. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I am David Saint. I am your dungeon master for the evening, and I don't have a career, so I really hope this takes off. <laughs> I am Alan Seawright. I am playing Lucky Kurtzel. I do things on the internet. Like, cry for money. I'm Stacy Harkey. I'm playing Posey Borgion. Uh, my character steals from the rich and gifts to the rich. He's like a really fun, like, Robin Hood. Hi, everyone. I'm Hope Vandermeiden, and I'm just really happy to be here. So excited to be here. My character's name, by the way, is Delilah Winthrop. She's moody. She's sassy. Sometimes a little not with the program, but she is also really happy to be here, too. Hi there, my name is Shona Kay. Um, I tell stories while I'm living, but also for a living. My character's name is Zippy, as in zippity doo -da, just a lot more zippy, not so much doo -da. Mm -mm. <laughs> Uh Hi, my name is Ethan Vandermeiden, and I, uh, I don't own a company or a YouTube channel. Um, I'm 21. <laughs> I'm single. <laughs> I'm gonna mingle. <laughs> I, uh, it just gets sadder and he's, sadder. He's I was on a, Bumble, ladies. Yeah, uh, it tinge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be playing the character of Edwin. Cool. Um, yeah. What else? I was a fan of Beyblade growing up. <laughs> That's really it. Immediate season favorite. <laughs> yeah. Delilah, is that you? <laughs> oh, I'm going to kill you. Oh. Wow. Ooh. Uh, you know him. Oh, I'm you, gonna kill him. What are you doing here? What? What? Where? Who are all these people? And he runs up to you. I uh, step in between, just kind of check him a little bit, and I'm like, Delilah, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> this is my father, everyone. Richard Winthrop. He's a great man. He's a wonderful father who takes great care of his children. Such great care that he decided to put me in this grave right now. <gasps> Delilah, what the hell is going on here? I want you to explain this right now, you miss. You know exactly what is going on, Dad. I don't you know, know what exactly the hell is going what I'm on. Doing here and you why been missing for three grave. days and you show up here of all places? Here? You put me here, Dimwit. I'm here in this grave with my head nearly cut off. What do you mean I'm here? Just for kicks and giggles? You think I'm here with these three random strangers because I want to be? You put me in this grave, you chopped off my head, and you buried me because you are a sick man and you hate me. And I hate you! Okay, I'm lying on the ground and I, I, I stop playing dead. And I'm just like, why did you have to bring me into this? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to make making my way downtown Vanessa Carlton style and you drag me into this? First off, what does this man see? Does he see like mangled corpses all around? And yeah. is he panicking? Well, technically the only one of you that looks pretty dead is Posey. <laughs> And the, I was playing dead. The rest of you have just you know, wrapped yourself up pretty well. But yeah, Posey definitely looks dead. He sees the group as they are, but everyone looks like they should be alive. He looks over at the grave for the first time. His eyes widen as he sees there's been a pit dug in front of it. And he says, what do you mean grave? Oh my God, Delilah. Delilah, show me your shoulder. My shoulder? Show me your shoulder now. You want to see my shoulder? That's yes. That's all you want to Fine. I then show him my shoulder. You notice for the first time as you pull your shirt down and reveal your shoulder that there is a symbol carved into your shoulder. A symbol of a, a triple cross with a circle drawn around it. And he says, oh, 
my lord. Get to the carriage now, everyone. I don't care who you are. And he just turns and he hightails it, not caring if you guys are following. I'm like, hey, well, someone someone will put me on their back like Yoda. Yeah, I, I, I scoop up Posey. Okay, that full country accent is, is I'm going to follow him. I'm immediately going in the carriage. Yeah, Come I on, just, girl. I'm I down. just drag angry over here. Come on, sis. <laughs> I scoop up Posey and I, I fall in step with Delilah and I just kind of look at her like, are we doing this? And I like put my arms around Lucky's neck like a damsel that was in distress. And I stare at him with loving eyes just to be a little obnoxious. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> but did you whisper it in his ear? Yeah. Thanks, bud. Thanks. Um, sure. <laughs> I didn't look at my father with some sincerity. How am, why am I here? Why did you put me here? Why? I will explain everything I can in a few minutes, but I cannot tell you everything right now. Get to the carriage. Well, we, we're walking. Well, well, no, somebody let's is. just get in the carriage. We can. We, I don't think we should stay mm. here. He seems pretty freaked out. He's already up in the driver's seat, like hitching up the horses, got his whip ready to go. I roll my eyes and hesitantly then go to the carriage with them. Cool. As you guys are getting into the carriage, you hear the wind start to pick up and blow through the trees. And as the wind gets louder and louder and louder, you realize it's not just air blowing through leaves this feels like the land is exhaling and the breath is moving towards you with this giant and it reaches you right as the last of you gets inside the carriage so the wind picks up the leaves start flying off of the trees richard whips the horse with a yeah and you guys are off down the dirt road through the woods and the faster you go the louder this breath seems to get the more the wind picks up and the darker the sky seems to become oh my now we're in your carriage we're running away tell us everything yeah. you know immediately do we see, as fast any, as do you we can. see anything i dig around in my pack to see if i have a kite <laughs> <laughs> i don't <laughs> i'm sitting on lucky's lap like a little kid he should probably should be strapped down you know pre-80s pre seat belts and i look outside what do i see okay go ahead and roll us. an investigation check for me I rolled an eight. Okay. Or a ten, sorry. So you look out the window, and you can see something is following you, but it almost doesn't seem corporeal. You can't quite tell, because whatever is chasing you in this carriage is bringing a darkness with it. And it's like this line of shadow is cutting out the moonlight, and it is literally 20 to 30 feet behind your trailer at all times, keeping perfect pace but not catching up. And that's all you can tell from what is happening right now. Okay, I have dark vision. I stare into the darkness. Roll, roll investigation. Okay, I'm gonna roll an investigation. 18 plus six, that's a 24. That's fantastic. Roll a constitution saving throw. Oh no, oh no. I don't know what that means. Me oh no, I know what that means. minus one, I rolled a four. <laughs> Okay. Are you going to poop yourself? What so constitution mean? You are able to penetrate this darkness and see into what it is that is causing it and what it is that is chasing you. And what you see is so beyond description that for the remainder of this arc of the campaign, you will not be able to physically put it into words. Take a D8 of psychic damage. Oh, jeez. Six. Holy crap. I only have nine hit points. <laughs> Holy. Oh, no. Just Holy looking at this thing almost kills you and then from the front of the carriage you hear richard shout don't look back and he whips the horse again and you guys start going even faster oh so he's not in the carriage with us no he's out oh, front I see, I exposed would have been great I, to know that two minutes ago richard I, yeah <laughs> i turn and look at at delilah with like bloodshot eyes and i just go what did this i don't i don't know I don't know anything. The carriage is racing down the cobblestone path through the woods, past the real family cemetery, and you can see just in the distance the glimpse of a building through the trees. You break out of the trees into this large, sprawling lawn and gardens, and in front of you would be actually breathtakingly beautiful uh, if you had the time to really appreciate it in the moment. What is in front of you is a not very large but fantastically ornate stone manor. The second you guys cross onto the property, the darkness slams into this invisible barrier that it seems to be unable to penetrate for now. But while the darkness cannot move any further, you still hear this whispering voice as if it is emanating from inside your heads. Two days, Richard.
Okay, there's a lot happening. I what what do we know? We know we hung out with death. That we all on the same page. I'm not crazy, right? You're right. I remember Mother, death. Yep. She slay, may she forever slay in grace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, said, sent us back to solve our own murders. Yeah. Right. Yes. What else do we know? Um, I've never seen that symbol before. Do any of us recognize that symbol? No. Yeah, you, no. That's not something in your world, in your play. That's not something that Daddy drew for fun ever. <laughs> no, nope, no, that's not a. Just please, just don't. Just don't ever trust him. Whatever you do, do not trust my dad. I can't Girl, listen out there. Delilah, he just saved us, I think. Uh, Whatever that thing is seems no, otherworldly. No, it's only for himself. He's, we're in this carriage. We're only oh. doing this for him. Trust me, he's not good. He is not good. I, I trust said, you. You all heard the voice, Two right? days. Two days, Richard. Richard. I don't think we trust this guy. This no, yeah. thing. I mean, I mean, I barely trust any of you. So <laughs> what he you did don't have to, to tell me, me twice. His own daughter. Well, how do you know he did this to you? I know he did. Wait, but how? He. I don't know you. Why would I tell you why I know he's bad? Just trust me that he's bad. Who cool. else do you have to trust? I, I don't have legs. Okay, I mangled. We've just we've stumbled upon each other in the weirdest way. I literally have no idea who you fine. can trust. Fine, fine. He killed my best friend. Wait, what? That's all I know is that he killed my best friend. I saw my friend in a, he was dead in a field and that's all I know. You and know my for dad sure. Killed, I don't know for sure, but he's a bad person. My dad, I don't know what he does, but he's not good. He does, he does things and I just, you have to trust me that I, he's not a good person. Can you go ahead and make a history roll? 19. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so you're trying to think back to see if you can recall anything else about the details of this. Which mm-hmm. would be greatly helpful for us. <laughs> <side note. laughs> and the very last thing you remember before your memory goes dark and you wound up in the afterlife was literally discovering your best friend, Huckleberry Beauregard, in a field seemingly dead. You were rushing to him. You were screaming. You were reaching out to grab him. And he opens his eyes and throws up. And that's the last thing you remember. And so we like see this pass over her face like something, like you re- you're remembering something. What is it? All I remember is that I just heard screaming. And I didn't know what to do. And I, I ran to him. He was in a field and he looked awful. And there was dirt all over him. And, and he was throwing up. And, and I think, he, I think he, he, he died. He's dead. Okay, the carriage pulls up to the car- uh, the the house, the carriage house. The carriage pulls up to the carriage house. That took a couple tries to say. <laughs> um, Richard gets out and he says, "Everyone inside before this gets any worse." Wait, mm. while she was telling that story, I was rummaging around in my abdomen, pulling out bottles, smelling them, sticking them back in my abdomen. I finally pull out one that I feel like smells familiar to me, and I hand it over and I say, "I think you should maybe drink a little bit of this for your, you know." Brain powerness. I take the bottle that's covered in gore. Oh, sorry. Pulls a little piece of meat off of it. Little lung remnant. I, I, I look at Zippy and go, thanks. And I pocket it and step out of the carriage. <laughs> While we're moving, I, I put my hand on um, Delilah's shoulders and I'm like, not the, the good one, not the one with the weird scar on it. You know? I put my hand on her shoulder and I'm like, listen, whatever you're onto, you're like, you're so valid to feel the way and you got us. We're going to figure this out. This has to be such a tough situation, but I am not going to, like, leave you alone here or bail on you, okay? I silently nod my head, but then I move my shoulder out of his arm. <laughs> out of his hand. I move my shoulder I, out of his hand. And to myself, I just grumble. Oh, bitch. <laughs> okay, we get out of the carriage. Okay, so Richard is walking and leading his way down the front walk of the mansion and throws open the double doors and says, Well, you coming? Carrying Posey, I, I'm walking over there and I say... So, uh, Dick, you got any place I can put this guy down? A wheelchair? Or a... I'm sure I can figure out accommodations for you folk as soon as I figure out who the hell you are. But until then, we're late for dinner. And he walks in through the front doors, and you guys are greeted by this massive, beautiful great hall that takes up what seems to be the majority of the first floor of this mansion house. Um, and in the center is a very large table. There's a grand piano off to one corner, like a very small orchestra pit set up in the other. There are stacks of books and globes and just beautiful trinkets from around the world, all decorating this room. And sitting at the table, Delilah, you recognize your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, and a very unexpected guest, 
Huckleberry Beauregard. <gasps> I'm speechless. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What is it, Delilah? What's what is it? Huck. The second he <gasps> hears you say his name, whips his head over and just tears wordlessly. He stands up and he runs and wraps you in his arms. And through his crying, just barely breaks out. Where have you been, Angel? How are you? You died, Huck. What do you mean, where have I been? He can barely hear you, and he says, I thought you ran off without me. No, I would I would never run off without you. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. I don't know what's going on, but I'll, I'll explain everything I can, but we cannot interrupt Papa's dinner. You know that. Huck, you died. Everyone sit down. Things are happening. He whispers that to you guys. And okay. He goes and he sits back down at the table, but makes a spot right next to you, or right next to him for you, Delilah. I walk over and take the chair closest to her daddy. Okay, great. Yeah, he's at the head of the table, but you can sit next to the head. As I but- sit down, I try to reach into his back pocket and grab what that thing that he put in his pocket was. Can I guess it? <sighs> Roll dexterity. Uh, 14. You aren't able to get it from him, but you're able to lift up his jacket enough to see what was underneath. And the thing that he hid behind his back was a bundle of roses. Oh. Mm. Oh. I try to, like, get Lucky to put me down next to Huck. I want to sit by Huck. I okay, just... so you're sitting down on the other side of Huckleberry. Yeah, I want to sit close enough to chat with him because I want to get as much information as he has. I want to turn up the charm. And I immediately try to like warm them up do any like roll anything to see how buttered I'm up i can get him shock by the way like <laughs> hand shaking i'm standing next to hug not moving you only have half of your face just remember that pose. Oh. well you have uh, two halves one half on? is just kind of droopy and crushed so just make sure you sit I, on the good half forward I, my good half yeah, is I facing him down so that the good half is <laughs> facing right. hug and i and I, I sort of I get the tablecloth and I sort of like, drape it over his crushed lower half. I'm like dress me. And I then I walk around to the other side of the table and I I push the chair kind of away from the table and I sit down and lean back and cross my legs like a arrogant son of a bitch. Well, at least the chair is facing forwards this time. I feel like we've yeah, grown up in the world. Sorry, flip it around. That visual We're proud. I'm proud of you. Angled on a I, chair. I no I refuse legs. to look directly at Huck like a classy lady of the court who's clearly flirting. But I'm not flirting. My goal is just to get warm him up and to get as much information on the side as I can. Okay, great. So you guys all sit down at the table and you have a few moments of just sort of like staring awkwardly in silence at each other. And Papa says, well, now that everyone's sat, I'm going to go have a word with the butler and make sure we've got food for us all. And he stands up and walks off into the kitchen and you guys have a few moments to talk. I just turn to Huck and I'm like... She loves you so much. She's talked so much about you. Um, What's the last thing you remember? So he leans over to you and he says, well, I don't know all the details right now, but three days ago, someone tried to poison me. Me and Delilah figured we had to get out of here before something happened again. I went home to pack my bags and I never saw her again. I walk up to this party (laughs) and I just go, hi, how you guys doing? Uh, I'm Edwin. I I don't know who you guys are. (laughs) <laughs> i just sort of slowly turn and look at edwin and i'm like hey edwin hey hi y- right. y'all are a goofy looking bunch all right lila is me cousin edwin yeah oh, i know your cousin edwin okay i take one of the butter knives and sneak it into my <laughs> shirt coat pocket just in case who knows but i'm also like edwin hi nice do to I, meet you do i see that <laughs> No. <laughs> roll, roll perception. How do you see anything? You're so excited to be here. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> no so you absolutely see it 100%, but you can choose what to do with that information. I'm like, it's a butter knife? Never know when you're going to need a butter knife. It's real, yeah. It's real, probably real silver looking around this place. Yeah. I, I open and I'm like, dude, I collect my own. I <laughs> got you. You never and know like, when you need butter you knife. Seem like a, Edwin, you seem like a cool dude of just. Great caliber and taste. What do you remember about Delilah being what what do you remember? Honestly, I just I just know that she's been missing for like today's what day is it today? Is it Tuesday? Like three mm. days? Is that what you mean? I you don't say know. Three days? We've been dead. <laughs> You've been dead? Don't look too close at my face, but yeah. Uh okay. <laughs> like or, are is are it more of like an outside <laughs> thing or are you saying you're dead inside? <laughs> Because that's a good question for Lucky. Very good question for Lucky. Your name's Lucky? I had a, I had a dog named Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm he, sure he was a real good boy. Nah, he sucked. <laughs> Papa walks back into the room. This feels very on point. Seems we got everything settled. 
do I have my corn dog? <laughs> he doesn't even look at you. There's just like a passive disdain. He like looks at looks at you out of the corner of his eye and then sits back down at the head of the table. And he says, first things first. I'm the realist. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> we need to have a conversation. We Who? are. You interrupted with the butler. I want my corn dog. You promised me. Your corn dog's coming, Edwin. Now quiet while I talk to the important people in the room. Uh, I sit up a little yes, taller. Sir. And he looks around and he says, now who the hell are you three? And what are you doing with my Delilah? That's what I was trying to get out, but then you interrupted Edwin? with... The- okay. Listen, we're not from here. We actually just met Delilah. She was in a grave. We dug her out. We were trying to help her. And... You came up. So honestly, we think that you probably could tell us a little bit more about what's going on than what we know. Now, this is all excellent, but so far I've only heard women talking. Could I please hear from a man in the room? And that's it. That's all you need to know about my sweet daddy, Richard Winthrop. What we're not going to do. Women? Really? That's what you're going to tell our guests? Silence, please. I don't know what kind of country you guys are from, but when the man of the house speaks, everyone listens. Richard, Rich. Can I call you Rich? Is that something I can call you? Can you can call me Richard. Um, you clearly, Richard, lovely name, lovely manner, can I say? Like, whatever we witnessed out there was heavy. And we have come from a place where we might be able to assist you with some information. I would love to see what we can do to help you. And maybe to see what you know about our situation. Because whatever you're handling seems pretty big, and it seems like you have a lot on your plate. Let's let's help each other. Those were a lot of big words, Dad. Did you get that? Wow. Uh, Delilah, I... I reach over and give her a high five. Yeah, you're like, there's a lot. I get it. Richard mutters something under his breath. Let's do a group perception to see if y'all can hear what he says. I got a three. I got an 11. Nine. Uh, 14. 20 plus four, 24. It's the second time that's happened. Thank you for saving our group perception. (laughs) Gosh, dang. Okay, so just so quietly under his breath, as the butler is coming out with the food, he says, this is why your mama left. Mm -hmm. Whoa. In the middle of the He's asking him. (laughs) We're going to go there. I very slowly and deliberately grab my spear that has been resting up against my chair Uh and I just set it across my lap. So the butler is coming around and setting plates down in front of everyone at the table. Um, And it's this delicious looking meal. It's, you know, duck confit on a bed of pilaf rice, three corn dogs for Edwin, a goblet of wine in front of everyone around the table. And as he does, uh, Richard says, well, so long as you heard that, I got something I need to deliver to you. And he pulls out a letter out of his pocket. He says, your mom wrote this before she left. Right after you did, in fact. Thought you might have run away together. Uh, And he hands it to you. And it is a wax-sealed letter in the hand of your mom. It just says, to my Delilah. You can choose to read it now or later, but the food's here. So, you know. I immediately start tucking in (laughs) because... You, okay, you don't get duck confit every day. I yeah. pick up my goblet and start downing the wine as fast as I can. Ooh, it just yeah. pours I right place... out of your lap. <laughs> it leaks straight out I onto place your Place the outfit. goblet down, reach over and grab Edwin's glass also <laughs> and continue. You notice that in my glass it also has a bendy it's straw. It's juice. <laughs> it's, 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 it's juice. And it's, it's just it's, it's fruit a, punch. It's fruit punch in a glass and it has a bendy straw. <laughs> it's good, ain't it? Is Richard eating his food? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very elegantly and slowly. Oh, everyone's eating? I want to open the letter right now. Really? Okay. So these are the contents of the letter you can choose to share with the rest of the uh, party. Written from your mother, it says, My dearest Delilah, should you return before the new moon, please know I did not wish it to be this way. I would have taken you with me and your brothers. I would have run across the world with you if it meant our escape. But you have left, and because of that, so must I. I'm sure you know all by now, or else you would have never run before the new moon. It is coming, Delilah. I just hope we can both outrun it long enough to see each other again. All my love, Mama. I'm reading the letter, and I finally fold it up, and I just put it in my back pocket, and I sit silent, and I just start staring at Edwin. I wave. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I then look over at the three... Strangers of the three characters, and uh-huh. I'm looking at them, and I'm looking at them, thinking why they're here, and and then I just look at back at Richard, my dad. And I go, <laughs> "You want to know what it says?" Of course, I want to know what it says. <laughs> it says, F- "You, Richard." No okay. wonder he doesn't like women speaking in this. <laughs> <laughs> he stares you down for a solid twenty seconds. 
Well, that what I expected from a whore. And he keeps cutting his food. Whoa. And I go, okay. I actually choke on a bite of... <laughs> <clears throat> I place my hand <clears throat> on her non-tattooed shoulder so she doesn't freak out. <laughs> I, I present my good face side of my face to Richard. Um, as I'm like, hey, Richard, what is that symbol on her shoulder? We heard something in the carriage. It said, two days, Richard. Um, I haven't got my calendar. I haven't been able to look at the lunar, um, <laughs> a lunar schedule. What, what's happening in two days? Let's just call it an old family tradition. And now that I've answered your question, you got to answer mine. Who the hell are you three? My daughter, three days, runs off. Isn't that right, Auntie? Didn't you tell me she ran off? And Andy says, yeah, she, I, heard, I heard she run off. You heard she run off from And who? he turns to Edwin and says, didn't you hear my daughter ran off, Edwin? I, I did, yeah. So my daughter runs off. Who did you hear that from? Comes back three days later with three strangers accusing me of murder. Well, I know he killed Huck. That's for sure, right, Daddy? You killed Huck. He bristles. What who did do? you hear from that she ran away? You want to know who I heard it from primarily? I heard it primarily from Delilah herself. She's been oh. telling me she's going to get out of this shithole, in quotations, for the last several weeks now. I give her everything. She should be so appreciative of everything I give her. The food on her plate, the clothes on her back. Everything is you, for her. I've hated my life here. You kill people, you hurt people, you are mean to people, you are a bully. I have never loved you. You wanna think this is a shithole? You dug the hole, daddy! This is your hole! And you dragged me down in it. Uncle leans over to Auntie and says, I always did like her better than Edwin. I heard that, dad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're not gonna get anywhere at this point, maybe. And I raise my hand, I'm like, I'm sorry to interrupt this absolutely touching family moment. Can someone carry me to the restroom, Edwin, maybe? Yeah, Do you know yeah, sure. I'm a little weak, but you know. Hey, you can drag me. Unless there's a chair around here with wheels. <laughs> nah, we got a baby carriage. Oof. I take a deep breath, but I swallow my pride and smile and say, perfect, perfect, absolutely perfect. It was originally for Delilah, but I was able to get it when I turned 16, <laughs> so. Edwin picks me up like an awkward baby. <laughs> Text me in the carriage and we I buckle you up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bonnet in the carriage. He thinks about it for a moment and then like decides not to put it on. Alright, let's go, Piff. Immediately as soon as we leave the room. <laughs> immediately Edwin takes me to the bathroom, whatever. It's a weird feet. As soon as we're coming back, I'm like, hey Edwin, can you just like show me around a little bit? Where does Richard do his work? He mainly does it in his work room. I mean, the fancy people call it the sturdy. Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Listen, do you mind? Do you mind just showing me around there? Uh, I'm 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 not I'm not supposed to be in there. Hey, listen, we're guests. It's not a big deal. If it's a concern, I'll let him know it's me. I just know he's kind of having a hard time with Delilah right now. You know, like it's kind of intense. Yeah, Figure we could just take a detour. I mean, un Uncle Richard's always been kind of tough on Delilah. He seems like he's tough on you too. Delilah's the only one who's really nice to me. Is she? Yeah, what? she's my best friend. Oh. When she went missing, I was really sad and everything. Like, like. I mean, like, I mean, I cry. I mean, like, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is a way to get to the study without crossing through the Great Hall again, but you're going to have to pass through the servants' passageways. All right, I sort just... Sort of go around the sides of the house. All right, I just take him. Push me. So, Edwin, what do you... You said you don't... You remember she ran away. Did you... Did Was anyone sad about it? Was, was Richard pretty sad? Oh, everyone around here was like... I mean, no one around here really gets sad. I mean, mm -hmm. like, la last time someone was sad is when, like, I, I broke my arm and everyone was like, mm. well, he's never going to use his arm again. And I was like, it's okay. And then they were like, we should cut it off. And I was like, nah, let's not cut it off. Let's leave it. Yeah. Just leave it. Like, oh, that's a Anyway, uh, no, no one really was sad. I genuinely enjoy Edwin. I'm Edwin. I'm like, Edwin, I really like your vibe, dude. <laughs> I like your, I like your vibe. <laughs> I take a deep breath, looking at my empty wine glass, feeling the tension in the room, and then just tap on it while staring at Papa and ask for refill. I go ahead and just two fingers on the bottom of the goblet, just slide mine across the table over to Zippy. At this nice. point, I'm feeling pretty good, and I start trying to play footsies with Papa under the table. Can we just take a moment and like 
appreciate the visual aspect of this mangled corpse of a woman <laughs> going to carnage, trying to like put her best foot forward and be kind of like sexy and like appealing. Okay, wait. <laughs> so I slink into my chair to reach under and as I slink, I make a large <laughs> noise as I try and I'm just lucky looks over and just like bites back a grin. Work it. <laughs> Okay, so he doesn't play footsies back, but he does not move his foot. <laughs> I'm now just rubbing my foot up and down his legs, making dead eye contact with him, and every once in a while, an eyebrow movement. As you can feel his perfectly shaven legs up and down <laughs> on your foot. <laughs> Lucky reaches across the table, takes Zippy's plate from in front of her, and just starts eating like he's got popcorn at a movie. He's just just enjoying the hell out of this. And he's like, why are y'all looking under the table? What's going on down there? <laughs> Auntie, Auntie doesn't notice it? Uh, no. Is she into it? No, she doesn't notice it. Okay. She doesn't notice it. Uncle does, and he's so into it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, does Lucky clock that too? Uh, roll for arousal. Eh, an 11. Eh, take it or leave it. It's a, yeah, it's they aren't a... the best feet you've ever seen, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what? I look at my aunt and uncle and I just go, why are you here? You're never here. What's going on? Uncle looks at you and then very deliberately looks at Papa and then looks back at you. He says, well, I like to think we call it something of a family reunion. You see, once every 25 years and Papa goes, shush, quiet now. I'll tell him everything tomorrow. And he says, I think it's time everyone heard the truth. And Papa says, I think it's time you go off to bed, uncle. And uncle just stands up, pushes his chair back so hard that his plate falls off the table and he storms off into his room. I reach over the table and grab his glass of wine. (laughs) (laughs) And And he is still there, but she's like shaking and nervous and quiet and like not really eating much, not really saying much. I have rooms prepared for all of you by Pendleton. I'll be seeing you at seven o'clock sharp. And he just walks off to bed. So that's my family, everyone. Things are making so much more sense. I turn and look at Delilah and I say, I think you're right. I think we're going to have to kill your dad. You guys, as you're walking through the uh, servant's corridor, Suddenly, a figure steps out into the hall in front of you, and you recognize it as Pendleton, the butler who just brought you your food. Oh, snaps! Oh, Bendy! Bendy! This this is my friend Posey. Nate, nice to meet you, Pendleton. Sneaking around again, I see, my boy. Well, I, uh, yeah. I was just asking him to show me around. Yeah. Said you guys have a lot of books in one of the rooms here, like a study or something? Yeah. Pendleton, Pendleton's really nice. He's, he's, he's really nice. I, I only, I dig with Delilah and, and, uh, Paddington, Pendleton. I call him Paddington sometimes. Like and I'm like, Pendleton, Pendleton, is it Pendleton? Lovely name. Also, Pendleton, this place is amazing. You do a great job here. You mind if I just like see the study? I happen to be a man who's a big fan of books. Yeah, we're going to study. He looks you up and down real hard, real long, hard stare. But then he breaks into a smile and he's like, I never could say no to you, my boy. Thank you. Carry on. I have a dinner to attend to anyways. All right, I do like a little skip as I... <laughs> Me too. <I'm> like, <laughs> you, know, you, you pick up your legs and you're like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Shape my mangled little like nubs. Okay, Pendleton walks off down into the kitchen area. You guys head back towards the study. Now we're back in the main hall. When Papa stands up from... Or Richard. We don't call him Papa, right? Okay. You can call him whatever you want. <laughs> when Papa Richard stands up from the table... As he gets to the door and is about to leave, I also stand up and excuse myself. I'm going to go and look for some more wine. I will be back. <coughs> I also reach over and grab the last corn dog off of Edwin's plate. <laughs> and I slip out of the room following Papa Richard as quietly and stealthily as I can and follow where he goes. Is he hot? Ooh. I just got to know. He is so attractive. Is he like a zaddy? Like Papa Richard makes sense. He's, he's not like a zaddy. He's like what would happen if a twink grew up and stayed mean. <laughs> <laughs> like incredibly attractive in the like 1950s abusive husband kind of way like extremely well tailored three piece suit like perfectly quaffed greased hair clean shaven chiseled jawline mm. tall fit that kind of man which I'm know. super into Don Draper, right? so as I step through the door I also push a little bit of intestine that is sticking up to the top of my blouse but do unbutton one more button 
simultaneously. Like, are you trying to be stealthy at the moment? Because I want to see where he goes, but I'm under. I do want to approach him and try and talk to him one on one. Yeah. Okay. Make a stealth roll. Eight. When you're readjusting your shirt, the squelching noises of your insides are getting <laughs> alert him to your presence. <laughs> and he turns around and he says, I'm sorry. I don't have any more time for whores tonight. I take my corn dog and hurl it as hard as I can, <laughs> aiming directly for his eyeball. Roll for attack! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Four. Okay, so you just chuck this corn dog, and it goes flying past him. Well, that was useless. <laughs> yeah, he, he heads up the stairs to what is presumably his bedroom. Hmm. <laughs> Noted. Is that the noise you made? I'm like, on You're which like, side mm. is the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to cut back. Okay. You guys break open into the study, and it is a just lovely three-tiered library. Like, it is just the most beautiful arrangement of knowledge you have ever seen. And these books look old and gorgeous and arcane, just stacking up wall to wall to wall, all four walls of this room, just completely covered in knowledge. There is a very large desk with what it seems to be bookkeeping and accounting books, uh, where it seems Papa does most of his work. Uh, but... For the most part, this was just a library. Can you believe it? People, like, can read. And, <laughs> and every time he opens his mouth, I love this dude more. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it's true. It's, no, like, it's cause, crazy. Because it's like, and there's like different uh, genres. genres. Mm -hmm. Is that genres? There's crying, and then there's happy, and then there's angry. Yeah. It's like imagination all over. But then some books are like filled with like facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, Edward, you gotta give yourself more credit. As he's talking, I have grabbed the wheels of the little carriage with my long adult arms. Well, it's it's one of those old carriages with the They're giant huge. back wheels. Yeah. So you can, you can wheel yeah. like a wheelchair. So I wheel over to the desk and I immediately just immediately start rummaging through to see if there's anything that might be indicative of anything nefarious happening. Roll a investigation with advantage. So roll twice and pick the higher number. Oh. Right, 19. 19? Yep. So with a 19, you can tell, written in these ledgers, um, you actually are pretty familiar with accounting being from your very wealthy background. I know money and numbers. Mm -hmm. I've seen them before. Uh, these ledgers are fake. Nothing in these makes any sense. The math doesn't add, add up. It's like someone just wrote down numbers for hours in a book with no rhyme or reason. And the other thing you can tell is that this book is covered in dust. In fact... Most of the things in this room are covered in dust. Like 25 years worth of dust? Uh, I would say, give it a, yeah, a decade or two worth of dust. It's almost as if, you know, the floor is clean. It's almost as if someone is coming in here, hanging out all day and not doing anything, and leaving again. Mm, I am curious. I'm, I obviously take that in. I know we don't have much time, I'm just assuming. And we should probably get back. I try to spy the oldest looking book. Give me one more investigation check. 19. <laughs> Again? 19. Dang. Okay, sweet. I was like, I was wondering if I could also like steal something, but like not a book, just like literally anything that's in there. <laughs> a pen or something. I kind of like, I, I see him take something and I'm like, he know, okay, this guy I can take something. Up. I, I want to take something that's like literally worth nothing. You're, you're fiddling around on the desk and it has one of those Newton's cradle desk toys. Yeah. You know, the little metal balls that like tap each other. And he takes... One of them. <laughs> <laughs> he only takes the two on the ends because, like, well, the rest of these are broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you, so I have two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pauzi, yeah. you want one? I. You know what? I'd be honored. Thank we'll you. Call, we'll call it friendship. Friendship. Balls, and we I, tap them together. I got three friends. I got Delilah, I got uh, Penn Pendleton, and then I got Posey. I'm legitimately thrilled and touched in my heart. I love this. He like, reminds me of like, one of my kids or something. I just like love this. <laughs> okay, so you're looking around this room looking for the oldest book, and you're not sure if the book you find is the oldest, but you do know it is the only one that isn't dusty. Mm -hmm. And so you pull it off the shelf and you open it up, and it is a massive arcane guide to ancient folklore. You are flipping through the pages, looking through. A lot of it is in language you're not even sure you understand. My next question is, do I recognize, do I find the cross with the three stripes in it and there at all? Absolutely. I see it, it, is, it takes you to a page describing an entity 
known as the Emissary of Kaifon, that seems to potentially have a connection with the thing that chased you in the woods. The Emissary of Kaifon is an entity that must be summoned. And that symbol is a key component of the summoning process. Okay. Can I keep the book? Yeah. I put it in my little baby carriage. <laughs> well, I put it underneath me to prop up my legs. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Wait, you're taking the book? No, I'm just borrowing it like a library. I'll bring it back, maybe. They won't find out, right? You know what? I tell don't... Edwin, I'm like, Edwin, you know what? You're right. I'm not going to. You know, and I point to the Newton's thing that we took from. It's like, do you, are you going to get in trouble for t if we take that? Do you think they're going to worry about that? And as he turns to look at it, I tear out some pages and put them behind me. Uh, I book. don't I don't know. Do, do a disadvantaged perception roll to see if you pick up him hiding the pages. <laughs> okay. All right. It's just, he turns and he was like a rip. <laughs> 10 minus one, nine. Yeah, I'm going to say the pages in the book are so old, it just kind of like just cracks off really quietly. <laughs> you can stuff it in your pocket. All right. Just about this time, you guys realize it is getting very late. As all throughout the house, the echoes of an ornate grandfather clock ring 12 times for midnight. And just as that happens, Huckleberry turns to Delilah and says, It's happening again. And he starts choking. And spittle starts rising up out of his throat. And he is foaming at the mouth. And he's like, Wait! No, no, no. And he I... begins throwing up liquid coming out of his eyes. Phlegm, it is oh, pus, okay. it is starting to be blood after about 10 seconds of this. Ew. Dang. Um, and he falls over on the ground, choking and convulsing. I fall on the ground with him, and I'm screaming, Huck! 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 No, don't die again! Huck! Huck, wake up! Wake up, Huck! Please, uh, please. I, I get up and I don't. run around the table to their side. I pull the vial out of my pocket that Zippy gave me, uncork Ooh. it, jam it in his mouth, and uh, plug his nose and do the like shake thing to like get him to swallow. And as that happens, me and Posey just bust through the door. He's I'm making him drink the vial. Oh my gosh! Okay. It all downtown. comes down to this. <laughs> it all comes down to this D4 roll, depending oh, no. on which potion you actually got. Oh no. Oh! Not that one! Huck's body goes limp. Oh, no. Most of it. What did you give me? That was the Viagra. It's half a lap, but I'm still living in. Yeah, it's a shallow breath, but I'm still breathing in. Murder She Rolled is Stacy Harkey as Posey Borgion, Shona Kay as Amber Zippy Ziffendel, David Sant as our DM, Alan C. Wright, that's me, as Lucky Kurtzel, Ethan Vandermeiden as Edwin Winthrop, and Hope Vandermeiden as Delilah Winthrop. Our theme song is Half Life by Glyph Society. Our show is edited by David Sant and mixed by Alan C. Wright. Please subscribe and follow on your podcast platform and give us a rating and write a review. It actually really helps the show reach new people. And aren't we all about reaching people? Really? You can follow us on social media at Murder She Rolled on most platforms, and be sure to come back two weeks from now for episode three of Murder She Rolled. Murder she rolled.